Hello guys, welcome back to the channel. In this video, I'm going to discuss with you how we can utilize two frequently used GIS software packages which are ArcGIS and QGIS to sort of explore NetCDF files and see how the data has been embedded within these NetCDF files and visualize them as raster data from which you can then just go ahead and make use of those particular data sets to do any further analysis if you wish to do so. So just a quick note on what exactly a NetCDF file is. NetCDF is probably the most commonly used file format, especially in the context of scientific data, for storing multidimensional variables. Now, very common data types that use these NetCDF file formats are things like temperature, precipitation, wind speed datasets. And the cool thing with multidimensional data is that you can have different types of datasets which consist of varying data both in time and space, all embedded in one single NetCDF file. So the example file that I'm going to use to demonstrate uh, this process is a monthly global average temperature dataset. So obviously in terms of space, it's spread out all throughout the globe. And there is a time dimension to it as well, which happens to be each month of the year. Now, for example, if you go to the properties of this file, right over here, you would be able to see that the corresponding file format is .nc. So we'll get started by opening up ArcGIS first. And after exploring this dataset using ArcGIS, I'm going to jump over to QGIS and show you guys how to do the same thing using QGIS as well. So this is my ArcGIS interface. What you can do is you can head over to this search button right over here and search for NetCDF. And the tool that we are interested in is this particular tool which is called make netcdf raster layer and within brackets you can see it mentions that it's a multi-dimensional data set so if i click over here you can see that now it's requesting for a couple of inputs so the input netcdf file you can basically browse through to the folder in which you have kept your netcdf file if not a very quick and handy way to sort of link the netcdf file to this tool will be to just simply drag this and drop it over here on the corresponding box like this and with that you can see that the rest of the stuff also gets filled up automatically however we'll just try to expand this and see what we have in each of these different uh, boxes now over here you can see we have to select the climatic variable and in my case the climatic variable that i'm going to project into my screen would be the mean monthly temperature so that's going to be this particular option and depending on the data set that you're using the name of the variable is actually going to be uh, different of course there can be multiple variables as well for example the mean temperature the maximum temperature the minimum temperature things like that if you're talking about temperature but if you're talking about a completely different variable all of these variable names are actually going to be different for your case and over here we can select what the x dimension should be and what the y dimension should be so x dimension should be longitude and y dimension should be latitude and as the output raster layer this one can be editable you can just give any random name that you would like so in this case let's say i would like to specify over here mean temperature and the value selection method over here will be by value so after that if i click ok over here you can see that just in a couple of seconds, it managed to sort of grab the data set and project it onto my working space uh, just like this. And now this actually acts as a raster. So you can see that the reddish values actually correspond to high temperatures and the bluish values actually correspond to lower temperatures. And if you wish to alter this scale, you can obviously do that simply by heading over to this uh, color ramp. And let's see if I were to go with something like this. However, you have to keep in mind that we are working with multidimensional data and the space part of that has been covered over here as it basically covers the entire globe projected onto the screen. However, what about the time dimension? So that's actually one of the special things when working with NetCDF data is that you have both the space dimension and the time dimension which you can work in using the same NetCDF file. So to explore the time dimension, what we can do is we can right click over here and go to properties and there will be a tab called NetCDF. And right over here you can see of, of course my variable happens to be the monthly mean temperature and X and Y has been linked properly. And over here you can see that the time dimension in this case has been assigned to 1 16 1991. And if you expand this, what you can see is basically 12 different time blocks. So each of these row basically corresponds to each month of the year. So starting from 1 all the way up to 12. 
And from this, we can interpret that what we get as this very first set of raster data basically corresponds to the average temperature of the month of January. But let's say if I want to get the average temperature of the month of April, what I can do is I can select over here and click apply. And you can see that the numbers actually change as well as the distribution of the colors in the raster as well. And if I were to go, let's say to December, the color should vary correspondingly if I click apply over here. And let's say if you want to inspect the temperature of one specific location, what you can do is you can make use of this identify tool. And let's say if you happen to zoom into one of these areas like this, and as you're zooming in, you will actually start seeing the different pixels. So if you happen to just click over one of these pixels, it will give you the pixel value. In this case, the average temperature is negative 8.99 Celsius at this particular location. And similarly, if I just head over to another location like this, you can expect that the temperature should be higher over here, which is about 15.28. Again, keep in mind that these temperatures are actually referring to average temperatures. So it might not be the regular temperatures that you're actually used to seeing in these uh, regions of the world. And uh, let's say if you wanted to export this as a raster, what you can do is you can simply right click over here and go to data and go to export data. And from here you can select the corresponding folder and you can give it a name. Let's say mean temperature. I'm just going to retain this name mean temperature one and the file format. You can select it to be TIFF or any of these uh, different file formats. I'm going to go with TIFF and we can just click on save over here. And just like that, we can add that particular file as a different raster file to our working space. Just like this. You might be able to change the color ramp in this manner as well. And if I head over to the folder itself, you can see that we have this TIFF file that we just exported a few seconds ago. All right, now we'll see how we can do the same process using QGIS. All right, so to open NetCD files using QGIS, you can head over to layer and click add layer and we're going to add a raster layer and from here you can just browse through to the folder in which you have saved your netcdf file so right over here you can see the tiff file which i just exported and the netcdf file which ends with nc so i'm going to import this netcdf file click open and after that you can click on add over here so similar to what we saw before using ArcGIS, we also have to select the corresponding variable that we're trying to import over here. And in this case, what I have is just one variable, which is the mean monthly temperature. But in case in your data set, if you happen to have multiple different variables, you obviously can uh, make multiple selections by holding down the control key like this. But in my case, I just have only one variable, so it'll be this. So I'm going to add this layer and at the first glance, what you get to see would not be exactly what you would expect to see, but we have to do some changes in the symbology or in the way how this data set has been presented. So for that, we can go to properties by right clicking over the layer. And under symbology, we're going to select the render type to be single band pseudo color. And from here, you can select a color ramp just like what you did before. So I'm going to stick with the default color ramp. And what's important is that over here, you can see 12 different bands. Now, when you see this, you should be able to get the idea that these different uh, 12 bands are actually corresponding to the 12 different months of the year. Because here we are talking about an average data set, an average global monthly data set, which has a monthly time dimension. So let's say if I select the band one over here, that should correspond to the month of January. And if I click apply and click OK, you can see that the data set actually gets displayed similar to what we saw before. And if you just wanted to do a quick verification over here, you can see that the maximum temperature corresponds to 33.3 and the minimum is 50.4. If you head back to ArcGIS, let's say I'll open up the window like this and maybe for the time being, I'll deactivate this raster that we exported. And if I head back to the multidimensional data set and if I go to properties and under the net CDF tab, if I select back January, 
Over here you can see that the minimum and the maximum temperatures globally during the month of January happens to be 33.3 over here and 33.3 over here as well and the minimum is 50.44 and the minimum is over here 50.43 but if you round this up it'll be 50.4 so the point that I'm trying to make is that it's basically showing us the same data set but now we are using two different software packages to actually display that data set so we'll do the same for the month of December as well and if I change this to be December by heading over to properties and selecting the band 12 now you can see that again the minimum and the maximum temperatures actually happens to be uh, equal alright so similar to what we did before if you want to do some uh, point specific inspections we can zoom into our area of interest and over here there's this identify features tool and if you happen to just click over one of these pixels on the side you would be able to see the corresponding pixel value or in this case it's a temperature value which corresponds to each and every time interval which I find to be quite convenient so similarly if I happen to maybe click over here on one of these uh, other pixels you can see that it changes accordingly and you can see that when it comes to the southern hemisphere the summers and the winters are sort of flipped so you will see the higher temperatures around January and uh, December and the lower temperatures around June and July alright guys so similar to what we did before if you want to export this as a raster you can still do that by heading over to the layer and if you go to export and save as you can select the file type to be geotiff and we can give a file name so currently you can see that we have this mean temperature 1 dataset which we already exported using ArcGIS and if I name this to be mean temperature 2 and the projection in this case I'm going to go with the WGS 1984 geographic coordinate reference system which is uh, EPSG 4326 and I will click OK and over here you can see that we got a new file which is called uh, mean temperature 2 we can go to properties and similar to what we did before we can select uh, different bands from here and click apply and ok and if you expand the color scale you would be able to see the maximum and the minimum temperatures uh, just like this alright guys so that's the end of this tutorial I hope you guys got the idea how to work with netcdf files using either ArcGIS or QGIS to basically display your netcdf data and do further analysis with it as needed so if you did like the tutorial give it a thumbs up and if you do like uh, this kind of content you can consider subscribing to this channel as well so until I see you guys again with another tutorial have a good one